right, welcome back to CSE Metrics Mania. Today we have Maureen Kirchner back on with us. And today Mo is going to dive into the details around the UGC Erickson Flanker Test. This is something that CSE has added into our, our evaluations in 2021. It's brand new to our process and it truly helps us evaluate the whole athlete. So as a quick reminder, CSC evaluates youth athletes out on the field in, in a way that captures both defensive and offensive measurements. So every single position on the field gets thoroughly analyzed so that we can have specific takeaways of where their skill sets are today in comparison to the collegiate levels. So let's kick this off with learning a little bit more about what the flanker test is. Hey, Jesse, good to see you again. So yeah, the UTC flanker test, we're really excited to bring it on to our portfolio of different things that we measure on athletes. So we knew that we covered hitting really well with blast and getting exit velos. And we knew that we covered pitching really well with Rapsodo. Um, mental, we used the tab test. We got arm velos and foot speeds for position players, but we knew that we needed to find something else that could help us analyze objectively defensive players on their defensive side. Um, so there's still lots in the works that we would love to, um, to really start utilizing to measure things like first step and range and all kinds of stuff, right? But one thing that we were able to implement this year was the UTC flanker test. And so we'll get to do a demo of it here in a little bit. But in general, what it measures is reaction time. So it's an app on a phone and all these different arrows come up and you have to turn the phone in the direction that the middle arrow is pointing. So it really measures reaction, right? You see it on the screen and then you have to physically make a movement to react to what, you, what you're seeing. So reaction time for sure. But then it also measures accuracy. So you get penalized if you make the wrong move, if you move the phone in the wrong direction. And so you can get this overall score that balances how quick it was versus how accurate you were. Um, and so it obviously has really strong implications for defensive players, right? They're seeing something happening on the field and reacting their bodies to it. So we know that it's um, going to be really telling for defensive players. Also for hitting, too, we're going to include it in our hitting analysis as well. Um, just because, again, it all makes sense. It's all tied together. So, yeah, we uh, implemented it this year and we're really excited for, for what it can tell us on a defensive athlete. That's great. That That is really exciting because, you know, we know from watching the game so much that it, it's one thing to be really effective in the practice setting of being able to maybe hit the ball hard, have a big throw. But when it comes to reading and reacting to the game and, and how that player can perform during a, a very intense moment in which they have to have these quick twitch reactions to yep. effectively perform, um, yep. it, it's exciting that we can start really putting some numbers behind a player's ability to read the game. So why is it important that CSE has integrated this into our fold? Yeah, again, we want to look at the whole athlete. And so we knew we had our other bases covered really well. And so we knew we needed something for the defensive players. Um, so it just gives us another measurement, another number to look at. Um, and so going back to what we talked about a couple of weeks ago, the testing of collegiate athletes, we are actually testing them on this flanker test too. So it's going to be really fun. We're going to be able to see, you know, what a, a power five shortstop, what their scores look like on this. Um, and then, you know, compare it to all the athletes that we're testing out. Um, so yeah, it's really neat. Again, get to see things like reaction, accuracy, and then an overall score relating those two items. Great. Yeah, the, the flanker test is really bringing some, some depth to our evaluations. And I think we could probably talk about this all day without truly understanding it. So let's go ahead and take a look. Maybe sure. A bit of a live demo. Yeah, sure. So before I actually bring it up on my phone, I'm just, again, going to um, explain really quickly how it works. So it's an app on the phone that I'm going to open up here in a second. And it's going to pop up a picture of five arrows. And so my job as the testee is to find the arrow in the middle and then figure out which direction it's pointing. So let's say it's pointing this way. I'm going to tilt the phone in the direction that the nose of the arrow is pointing. So I'd be tilting the phone this way in this example. 
So sometimes they make it easy for us and all the arrows are pointing in the same direction, all five of them. And so that type of image, they call it a congruent image, is easier for our brains to process. And so a lot of times those reactions are quicker. And then some of the pictures, they call it an incongruent picture. The arrows will be pointing in different directions. So maybe some of them are pointing this way, some of them are pointing this way, and then we have to see what the one in the middle is. Again, there are five. So you pick out the one in the middle and then you have to tilt, again, the phone in the direction that the middle one only is pointing. And so when the arrows aren't pointing the same direction, it takes our brains just a little bit longer to process it. Um, and so we get to see all this information. We can see what a player's average time is when the arrows are congruent. We can see what the average time is when they're incongruent. We can see an average across all the different trials, right? Um, so it's really, really fun and uh, interesting. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up on my phone real quick. So bear with me while I do this. I'm sorry, you're gonna see a, a picture of my two boys back there. So always a proud mama, I'll always. Uh, <laughs> smiles all day. Yeah, exactly. So first we tie um, each test to an identification number. So we'll know exactly which kid is taking which test. We go ahead and hit start. It does a countdown and then we start seeing these arrows pump up, pop up and I get to react. And so as I'm reacting, every time I complete a trial, the phone will vibrate in my hands so I can tell um, when I've completed you know, the trial. Again, I'm trying to go as fast as I can. Um, and so the other thing that's cool about this, these arrows pop up, the pictures pop up at a random intervals. So I can't like jump the gun and you know try to do it, like anticipate when it's gonna come. Um, so I got 20 out of 20, which is you know good for accuracy. My average response time over all the, all the trials was 512 milliseconds. Um, so right now we don't have a good sense of good or bad yet, but once we get done testing all these collegiate athletes, we'll be able to develop norms surrounding this. Um, and so we'll be able to say, hey, 512 is you know, probably mediocre, let's say. Um, I bet somewhere down in the 400s is going to be very good, 600s, not so good, right? So we'll have a much stronger sense of where those boundaries really lie. Um, but yeah, that's a flanker test. Pretty fun stuff. I am thoroughly impressed. That was some serious multitasking. <laughs> 20 out of 20 while she was talking us through the flanker test and taking it at the same time. I've, I'll, I, I will admit I've done this several times. So the more you do it, the better at it you get. So um, on the field, we allow the, the players to take it three times because inevitably the first trial, they're a little bit slower while they're just figuring out how it works and how they really have to tilt the phone and stuff. Um, the second one, they're better at it. And by the third time, they've got it down. So we have them do three and then we average it across all three trials, their times. Awesome. Well, yeah. practice makes perfect. Yeah, for Thanks sure. Thanks for giving us a, a quick view into the flanker test, Mo. And we yeah. do have some more information on the flanker test on our website um, with a blog post um, dedicated specifically to learning about this. So I hope you go and read that blog post to learn a little bit more and definitely stay tuned for more as we start to release some of these norms up after we gather more information from the colleges that we are testing. Thanks for uh, jumping on with us today, Mo. No problem. Thank you, Jesse.